Okay, students, today I am going to show you how to do the calculations for the um, vinegar and sodium hydroxide lab um, that we recently finished. Um, so um, let's why don't you turn to your calculations um, section on your lab so you have your data table there and the directions for the calculation. So it says, uh, so first of all, you've got your your data table that has your volume used. So what you first need to do is figure out what your average volume is. So I'm just gonna make one up based on what I saw in the lab. So I'm gonna say my, my average volume was um, 41.29 milliliters. I am just making this up. I don't know if your data is that. But that's gonna be, that's what my average volume used is. So the number one part, so for calculations part one, it says use your known molarity of the sodium hydroxide. And remember, I told you that your molarity of your sodium hydroxide that you were working with was 0 0.1 molar. And we also have a volume of sodium hydroxide that we use, which is this, okay? So now we're going to solve, we're going to use our molarity and we're going to use our volume to solve for number of moles using our molarity formula. Molarity equals moles over volume. And of course, that volume is going to be in milliliters. OK, so my molarity is 0 0.1 molar. My number of moles is what I'm looking for, so moles. And my volume is 0 0.041 two nine liters. Okay, and grab my calculator. So I'm going to do point one times point zero four one two nine. And that gives me, I don't even know why I grabbed a calculator. That's embarrassing because I could have just moved the decimal point over, but that's okay. <sighs> 0 0.004129 moles of sodium hydroxide. Sweet. So now we know how much sodium hydroxide was used up during our titration. Okay. So now we knew in our in our titration that we had a one to one mole ratio. And I'll show you that again. We have sodium hydroxide and acetic acid, HC2H3O2. And that gives us H2O and uh, NaC2H3O2. Okay, so this is a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So we can use this formula. Um, so actually, so since there was since there was one, we can say that the number of moles of sodium hydroxide is going to be equal to the number of moles of acetic acid because it's a one to one mole ratio. So that means that our moles of sodium hydroxide is also the same number as our moles of um, acetic acid. So that means we have zero point zero zero four one two nine er moles of acetic acid. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, I know how many moles I have. And we want to get to the percentage of vinegar, so the percentage of acetic acid in vinegar. And so step three of our calculation is to, is to determine how many grams of acetic acid we have by converting the number of moles to the mass by its molar mass. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a mole conversion here. In one mole of acetic acid, okay, there are 60.052 grams of acetic acid, HC2H3O2. So let's, calculate that. I know I need a calculator for this one. 
times 60.052. So this gives me 0 0.2 Four. How many sig figs can I have? I can have four sig figs. Two, four, be two, four, eight, zero. Grams of acetic acid. Okay. So, how much vinegar did we, did you use? And you're probably going to say to me, Miss Burger, I don't know. How many grams of vinegar? Well. What we did was we measured a volume of vinegar because that's the most normal way to measure vinegar. Okay, um, so we're gonna use the we're gonna use the density because density is mass over volume. I don't know if you remember that, but density is mass over volume, and the density of vinegar. So the density of vinegar is 1.05 grams per milliliter. Okay, so how much was our entire um, sample? Our entire sample's mass, the mass of our entire sample, um, so we have the density is 1.05 grams per milliliter. We're going to try and figure out how many grams of vinegar were in our 5.00 milliliters. So we're going to do 1.05. Oh, that's going to be an M. Okay. So it's going to be 5 times 1.05. So this is how many grams that vinegar was. Now, not our, of our acetic acid. This is how many grams vi of the household vinegar, okay, of vinegar we used. Okay, so that gives me, and I put that in the calculator again, and now I'm embarrassed that I did that, but that's okay, because it gives you 5.25 grams of, of vinegar. Okay, so in 5.25 grams of vinegar, I had zero, so my percentage of vinegar that is acetic acid is um, this number, 0 0.2. 2480 grams. That's how many grams of acetic acid over 5.25 grams of vinegar. Okay, so let me do 0 0.2480 divided by 5.25. And that gets me 0 0.0472, okay? But remember, we're looking for a percentage here. So this whole thing needs to be multiplied by 100. So I have to multiply this whole thing by 100. So I'm moving my decimal place over two places, which means I'm, I'm telling people that my vinegar's percentage based on my calculations are 4.72 percent okay so you're going to want to um, consult the bottle of vinegar that is in the classroom over by the sink and it will tell you the percentage of vinegar um, on it okay or you can google it if you need to but regular vinegar household vinegar is a certain percentage and I don't want to give it away in this um, in this video Okay, it'll tell you what percentage acidity it is, okay? Um, and I know I didn't ask you guys on your calculation section for this, but I do want you to report this to me, okay? Um, I want you to determine what your percent error is, and your percent error 
is going to be equal to the absolute value of the accepted value minus your value divided by your accepted value. And then of course times 100 to get a percentage. Okay. Um, I think you'd be surprised. I think you're going to be surprised about your percent error. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so again, the bottle of vinegar is um, over by the sink in the classroom. Um, and then what I also want you to do is identify sources of error, but not just identify them, right? I want you to tell me what that would do to your percentage of vinegar. Would it lead you to believe? So would it make you think that your concentration of vinegar is higher than it's supposed to be or lower? So tell me what you did, what you could have done wrong to give you that kind of number. So if your number is below what the percentage is, tell me what you could have done wrong that made you think that basically the acid was less strong the acid that you were titrating was less strong, okay? If you got a higher number, then what would lead you to believe that it was stronger than that, okay? So what I want you turning into me is your version of these calculations. So the calculations because I use my own random number, but yours are, your calculations are gonna look very similar. You're just gonna plug in your own number. You're going to um, tell me your percent error. And then your um, um, error analysis. Okay, and I really want you to think critically about this okay um and not just kind of give like a you know a blank answer of like oh yeah well there's human error somebody knocked something uh tell me why that's affecting your data and which way it's going to move your data okay um any questions give me an email okay bye